All right, guys, we're here with Abby Klein, the owner of Miami Mold Specialist, a top uh, mold remediation uh, and inspection company down in Miami. Um, been down there since 2016, but originally started up in New York. Uh, excited to dive into Abby's story in terms of starting the business and everything she's learned on her way to building, um, you know, really, really a big business in a major city. So Abby, excited to have you on, excited to dive into your story. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to have you on. Um, definitely excited to have you on. Uh, so really uh, want to dive into, you know, your story, Abby, everything you've learned along the way of building your business. But yeah, just to start things off, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and the business that you run? Yeah, so I mean, I run a mold inspection and remediation company um, in Miami. We service all of South Florida. Um, I am very much so a people's person. So a lot of what I do is just based on, you know, everyday interaction with our standard clients and just building those, you know, relationships with people and really learning about their needs and, you know, how, how we can help them. I haven't had to deal with too much mold, luckily, in my time um, renting apartments in New York and LA over the years. I think I had a little bit of mold in my shower once, but uh, I cleaned it up pretty easily with some spray from the hardware store. So for people that aren't super familiar and are lucky to not have had to deal with any major mold issues, can you give us a breakdown of the general services that you offer and, and the problems that you help your customers with? Sure. So. I mean, from an inspection standpoint, we basically come in and, you know, try to see if there is a mold issue, what areas are affected, and then really focus on finding the source, why it's happening, because any remediation process is only as good as, you know, making sure that you're treating it from the stem of the issue to make sure that it doesn't reoccur. I mean, the last thing you want is for someone to come in, do a remediation, and then it's like, okay, the humidity levels are still poor there's still moisture in the walls or whatever it is that needs to be addressed. And then it just, you know, keeps on coming back. That's obviously not effective. That's not what we're going for. So we come in and basically do a complete thorough mold inspection. Um, you know, obviously the basic samples, testing um, the surface, testing the air, seeing what kind of contaminants are in the air. And then, um, you know, using infrareds to see if there's any type of moisture behind the walls, using humidity meters to check humidity levels digital air particle counters to see how the uh, air pollution is. Um, and then basically we put together like a full report to kind of, uh, you know, mimic exactly what the findings were. And then from a remediation standpoint, we're kind of, you know, going in and seeing, okay, based on our inspection, these were the findings and these are the areas that need to be addressed. So um, remediation can be, you know, treating the actual ductwork, the AC unit, um, doing it a complete air restoration, going room by room throughout the property to kind of, um, you know, restore the air quality. So literally like suctioning out the air that's in each room and, you know, siphoning it out and replacing it with new fresh air. Um, and so basically we're looking to always provide our clients with just a better, healthy environment, you know, cleaner air, healthier air means you're breathing better. And we find that that has a huge effect on, you know, clients in their everyday life. Great. So of all the home services businesses, um, obviously these are tough businesses, meaning you're typically doing hard work um, involving, you know, challenging, you know, whether it's pests, whether it's landscaping, you know, you're out there doing hard work. So mold in particular, um, you're dealing with sometimes what I think can be dangerous, you know, uh, mold and, and potentially harmful. Um, it sounds like a dangerous and hard business to be in. So Abby, wh why mold of all the businesses, of all the businesses you could have gotten into, what led you to this specific one? Um, I think in general, um, I mean, I remember starting back like after 9-11, there was just so much talk about air pollution and just people that were having different kinds of symptoms, issues with like starting with the basic air that we're breathing. And, you know, like I said, I'm always looking to, you know, looking for education, just curious on, you know, what people are suffering with and listening. I think really like the key to starting any business is kind of like listening to, to the people around you, what they're experiencing, what the needs are, and then kind of tailoring that. So, I mean, just me, I wanted to kind of like have a value and a purpose to what I was doing. And I think that just in general, people are very focused, like we're kind of conditioned to focus on health 
from a diet standpoint or from an exercise standpoint or even from a spiritual standpoint, but something as basic as like, you know, the everyday, you know, breathing of, of air, like just the environment that you're actually in on a daily basis, whether at home or at work. Um, so I think that really, you know, kind of made the difference and kind of was like, okay, I think this is where we need to be because I just feel like that was a missing space and just having the opportunity to provide like organic solutions for these people, because maybe, you know, there's others that are doing maybe similar, you know, treatments, but you know, you don't want to replace the mold with harsh chemicals either. Then you're creating different problems. It's all focused about, you know, the health and condition of the environment that, that you're in. Got it. Going back to the original business in New York before you moved down to Miami, can you talk us through like the first five, six weeks of starting this business and how you went from like, oh, I think I'm going to start a Miami uh, a mold specialist com uh, a company to now having the burgeoning business that you do? Like, what was that original creation point like? And and can you walk us through that process for you? Yeah. So, I mean, of course, obviously I started really small. I literally started out of my apartment, one phone line, um, you know, just advertising a little bit um, on like with PPCs and just, you know, starting uh, a website, which was extremely basic. Um, and then just doing a ton of research. I mean, you know, speaking with, with labs, seeing what kind of services they offered. Um, doing research from, of course, you know, the, the professionals in the industry, which is like the NAMP, the National Association of Mold Professionals, and different, um, I guess, experts in the field to kind of see, okay, what is mold? How does it get addressed? You know, how can we clean it efficiently? And then, you know, as calls came in, kind of really, again, like focusing on what are these clients saying? What is their pain point? How can we help? And, you know, building, building from there. Got it. So let's talk a little bit about the team. Um, how big is the team right now at, at Miami Mold Specialists? How many employees are there? So right now we're 18 people, including okay. myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So talk to us a little bit about going from, you know, one person in an apartment to now having close to 20 employees. What have you learned about hiring, firing, finding the right people to join your team so that you have, you know, the best people servicing your customers? What, what are some learnings that you've had from, from building a team up to now 20, uh, close to 20 employees? Um, I think in my case, I really focus on kind of like a family environment. So aside from, I feel like sometimes when, when you're looking to hire, you're of course looking for skilled individuals, but I think the difference is in looking for someone who has the same core values and concepts that you have. Because when you're trying to build a business that's based on honesty, integrity, super focused on you know the clients that you're servicing, you really need to have people with those kind of values. You know, someone that's going to walk into a house and say, "Okay, like if this was my mom or my sister, how would I be treating this property?" And so, and then kind of like you know, incentivizing that, building this culture, um, you know, that's really focused around the employees and also the client. Like, so basically we're trying to build a culture where, you know, both our clients and our employees are valued, seen, and heard. Like, that's really what we're looking for. And um, at the beginning, of course, it was difficult. I mean, it was literally like, you know, putting as many ads as possible and, and interviewing people. But aside from, like I said, honing in on the skills, really focusing on like, okay, what are the values of the person that's sitting in front of me? Can we build together? And, you know, just go and create based on that. I mean, you know, from a small apartment, you, you end up moving, you know, you outgrow your space. Then, you know, we actually, then I actually moved to, you know, another apartment, but it wasn't the one where I was living. You yeah. know, and then slowly kind of like phase yourself out so that you, you know, you're not putting all your investment in one place that, you know, immediately and went to start up, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, in terms of like the early days and getting the business off the ground, what were some of the channels that you found were helpful for getting new customers? Um, was it social media? Was it, you know, PPC advertising, like you mentioned? Were you doing any print media? Um, talk to us a little bit about customer acquisition in those early days at Miami Mold. Yeah. So, I mean, in the beginning, we, of course, used like the more old school methods. Um, so definitely like media, for sure. We were in newspapers all over. Like here in Miami, we have community newspapers. 
Um, that was definitely a big one, you know, and they have like their little newspapers for each individual area. Um, so we definitely did that. Of course, you know, SEO, um, PPC for sure. Basically like a diversified marketing strategy so that you're not putting all your eggs in one basket, um, you know. Um, and then of course, social media as it grew ended up taking its place. We, we, we held out on that kind of for a while. Um, we're using more traditional methods, but now of course, since, you know, everybody's on social media, it's kind of like the next step in, you know, keeping our clients interested and, you know, getting those clients through the door. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, mistakes you've made and learned from, you know, our, our audience is, uh, and sometimes ha has a home service business that they're current currently running other times they're thinking about starting one so for someone that's thinking oh like you know abby's story is great it seems like she's built a great business i want to get into mold remediation and inspection what's one to three mistakes you've made in the past that you've learned from that you could tell someone that's thinking about getting into this business i mean i think mistakes in general i mean that's just bound to happen like that's part of that's part of what we do um, on a daily basis, like meaning from the beginning, there's going to be so many learning points and pain points, but just to see them kind of more like opportunities, like, okay, what is it that we need to be doing better? Um, who is it that we need to be listening to? Um, and then kind of like fine tuning the process from there. So, I mean, I think as far as like challenges and, and failures or mistakes, um, you know, sometimes they stem from, you know, us giving let's say expectations to a client that may or may not be, um, you know, what they're envisioning. So for example, you know, a client saying, okay, you know, I don't feel so well in this particular environment. And we're like, okay, well, this is the reason why we have to explore, you know, kind of inspect and see what it is that needs to be done, why you're experiencing that. And then based on the remediation or whatever treatment is necessary, how you're going to go from there. So we have our share of clients who literally think it's like, it's magic, you know, like we do a remediation and, you know, it's the next day they're going to feel better. And we're like, you know, it's a process like, you know, it's, it's an environment that you're living in and you've been here for so long. So, you know, it takes time like anything else for you to feel better, breathing better, living better. So I think um, being really clear on the expectations and like really like breaking it down is a big one. Because of course, like when you're trying to keep your customers happy, you really want to just make sure that they're, you know, they're satisfied, you're giving the best quality service, and they know exactly what to expect. So I would say that's a big one. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about technology. It's 2024. Uh, everyone I've talked to on here has a different tech stack that they use to power their business. Um, a CRM like Jobber, or Booking Koala, um, maybe getting more sophisticated with you know outreach systems like a Go High Level. Some people keep it simple with just a website and a phone number and email. Talk to us a little bit about the pieces of software, Abby, that are crucial to running Miami Mold Specialists. Um, I mean, definitely a CRM is the start, no <laughs> doubt about it. Like a great CRM is super crucial. Um, I would say a field service management software. So we're all about, you know, transparency and just giving our clients kind of like that customer journey of, you know, what's going on in their house. Some, you know, when, when a remediation is going on, let's say there's no, there's no one in the house, you know, it's empty. So people want to know what's going on. So basically focusing in on, you know, just documenting the full process, photos, videos, um, and just information as far as the client is concerned. So definitely a field service management, I would say, um, and a great accounting software. Some people would say a review software. Mm. My personal opinion is I found that the best way uh, to get a good review is to ask for one. <laughs> like literally when you're, you know, when our team is out there providing like exceptional service, um, if they just simply ask for a review, a lot of times our clients are, are you know, very happy to get one. So yeah. That means a lot because you have 788 reviews, which is like a ton. That's like probably one of the m most I've seen for sure from guests on the show. So, um, it, so you don't use a you know nice job or review software right now. We we don't. Um, we were using at some point uh, broadly, and okay. um, we we used it for various things, not just for the reviews, but we literally saw and found that, you know, if you just ask for a review, that definitely helps. So what we do is we have um, those little QR cards. I'm not sure if you've seen that, like these, there looks like a business card or even like a credit card. 
it has a QR code and you just like, you know, the client can basically like tap it to the phone and it opens up their Google link to leave a review. So if you literally ask for it and say, Hey, like if you would be so kind to leave us a review, you know, we're all based on customer service and feedback and it really helps us with our process. You know, they're willing to do it. And especially when you make it easy, I feel like that's key. Like if they're like, Oh, I need to log into my account now. I'm like, you know, and then it gets, it gets more, you got to simplify, you know, yeah. that's the way. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, so let's talk about, you know, what, what you've done from, a operation standpoint, you know, uh, to, to scale, like, I know you have a lot of clients, you have 20 employees, like I can just envision the amount of operations and coordination that has to happen across payroll and getting to the clients on time and collecting payments, like the size of your business, from what I understand, uh, seems like there would just be so much coordination that needs to happen. So obviously you know, you can't do everything yourself. So can you tell us a little bit about how you kind of manage internal operations so that you still pre like you present a great client experience? Um, is it just about hiring the right people? Is it about creating, you know, standard operating procedures? Is it about software? What are you doing, Abby, to really make sure that your business is humming internally and that you're presenting a great client facing experience? Um, so, I mean, definitely helping, you know, definitely keeping the right team is, is a huge, is a huge help. I mean, that's number one, <laughs> you know, you got to have the right, the right people on the field servicing your clients for sure. Um, you know, from an education standpoint, I think that's really where we stand out. So, uh, we have weekly meetings every Monday morning, you know, we have like almost a one hour, maybe sometimes two hour meeting in the morning to basically go through our previous week, um, what were our successes, what we did well on how we can improve on things that we need to do better on, um, and kind of just, you know, put to the forefront any type of new education that we've learned um, in that week. And that kind of gives us a way to collaborate. Yeah, I think really collaboration is key. Um, different teams out on the field are going to, you know, experience different clients, and we want to be able to learn from those experience. Um, and, you know, be able to make changes or implement new technologies or new processes based on that. So we have a very clear um, protocol. You know, our, our technicians follow that. Our office is 24-7 engaged with the technicians on the field. Um, you know, we leave windows for, you know, appointment times just for, for traffic and for other, you know, issues that we might experience on the road. And I think that, you know, between communication collaboration and education, I think that's really um, what's keeping us ahead of uh, the industry right now. Three C's, communication, collaboration. What was the third one? <laughs> you made me lose it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll communication, go back. Well, collab collaboration, and <laughs> I don't even know what it said. Coordination? We'll find it. I'll pull it out. <laughs> I'll go back in the interview and, and get it for the newsletter. I like those three C's, Sounds though. Those good. are great. So client satisfaction, Abby, means um, a lot of different things to a lot of different business owners. For some people, that just means getting their clients the lowest possible price, uh, getting them service as, as quickly as possible, um, providing the best you know service that, that the market can offer. How do you at Miami Mold Specialists define client satisfaction? So we believe that it's literally everything from first contact with the business all the way through completion and then um, the follow-up. So that basically means that when you're contacting Miami Mold, I kind of think how I would want to be serviced. So I personally, I don't want to talk to machines. I don't want to be routed and called back. I want, you know, I'm calling a business, I have a need, and I want someone engaging to pick up the phone and understand basically what my issues are and guide me through the course of action that I need to be taking. I mean, most of our clients are basically looking for, you know, an expert in the field, they're experiencing something and they want to know, you know, what needs to be done in order to cure whatever it is that they're, that they're feeling or that they're experiencing. So, um, you know, definitely voice, first point of contact, you know, a call, a human, um, the actual service, you know, coming down, being on time, having communication, we're on the way, we're leaving, should we wait for you? Should we lock the door? I mean, you're coming into people's homes. And, you know, of course, it's like intimidating. And, you know, some people don't want to leave their their belongings, you know, so trust is a big one. 
you have to kind of like create that experience where it's like, okay, this is what, you know, you're bringing to the table and we're going to basically come in with all of our knowledge, all of our expertise and all of our core values to really come in there and make sure, you know, nothing is touched. Everything looks exactly intact the way it's supposed to be. We're focusing on all the pain points in the house. We're doing a walkthrough when we finish, make sure like was anything left behind? Is there any issues that we didn't tackle? Um, and then, you know, once we leave, of course, having, you know, that, that client communication as well, we're done, you know, you can come back into your home within X amount of time, uh, you know, and then following up to see, you know, is everything okay? Not just right after, but even a week later, like, is everything okay? How are you feeling? Is there anything that we can help with? And kind of, you know, really continuously, you know, engaging with the client and making them feel that, you know, level of handholding where you're always going to be retaining customers because you're building relationships. Love it. Love that, that approach there, Abby. So, so, so many good insights here and so many good learnings. Um, Thank you for sticking tough. There's some of the technical issues that hopefully people watching won't even notice because we'll uh, we'll cut them out. That's the beauty of a, a recorded <laughs> interview. So, um, Abby, tell us a little bit about how you're thinking about the future of Mammy Mold Specialist. I know you're about coming up on you know maybe 10 years. It seems with the business, um, you've grown it to an amazing place. How are you thinking about the next 10 and 20 years of Mammy Mold Specialists? Um, so I think we're really going to focus on innovation, expansion, and just community outreach in general. Um, so, you know, always staying at the forefront of, of, you know, changes in the industry of mold detection, of mold remediation. How can we provide better service? What new technologies are out there? How can we, you know, continuously increase our, you know, standards and deliver excellent, you know, work throughout, you know, whether it's a small job or a big job, but kind of like maintain that quality of service. And then um, just increase like community outreach incentives and programs. So basically further education, you know, awareness about mold issues and, you know, what exactly that has as far as an impact on health is concerned and, you know, what we can do and basically grow from here to assist in our communities locally as well. Love it. Love it, Abby. Where can um, folks connect with you and the business on the internet, you know, Instagram, Twitter, the website um, for folks that want to learn more about, you know, what you're doing and what you're building, where can they find you? Yeah. So you can go to Miami mold specialists with an S at the end.com. Um, that's our website. You can connect with us as well on, on Facebook, on, on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, also Miami mold specialists with the S. <laughs> Um, and, you know, reach out, you know, we love to hear from our clients. We, you know, big and small, we, we love them all, <laughs> you know, yeah. we really think that, um, you know, we, we love to engage and just communicate and, and reach out, you know, we're, we're happy to hear from you always. Cool. All right, Abby, thank you so much for coming on and hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.